a uh, slide rule with multiple slides comes along, I start to get excited. So when this came on eBay, I had a, had a look at it and thought, oh, it's made of cardboard and paper, didn't have anything special to it, but it, it did show two slides. So I thought, I'll throw in a small bit. And, yep, I, I got it, and I received it, and this is it here. I'll pass it around so you can have a look at it. And we'll, I'll describe it a bit, uh, a bit further later in, in the thing. And also, I had it for a few years, and I was kept looking up for, wonder if it was, actually was turned into a, into a production model. And there was, on uh, Rod Lovett's uh, site, it showed that a number of Spitz glass slides have been sold over the years. So there must have been a production model. So I waited around for a few years, and sure enough, one came up. And it looked like that. Now, when you open up the, uh, the prototype model, it's got uh, cardboard flaps on it, you'll see it's very similar to what the production model is. And I'll send the production model around as well. Uh, the cursor is a bit uh, loose, so you might want to watch out for that. So I had both of them, so I thought, oh, well, I've got to do something for the IM. So this is it. Now, Jacob Spitzglass. He was born in Kiev, Russia, and he actually went to school and did most of his uh, schooling in, in Russia, in Kiev. But uh, he wanted to apply to actually go to an, a, a university in Austria, but was denied for some odd reason. Anyway, like most Russians in those days, they immigrated to the US, and he was in the USA in 1904. And he worked for Republic Flow Meters. And he was secretary of research on, on those sort of things. And there's a few other things about him. He received a, a Bachelor of Science and a, um, a Master of Science in the US. And uh, he also was awarded the Longstreth Medal from the Franklin Institute. It's, it's for uh, research into the flow, fluid flow. Oh, this is uh, it's, a, um, it's a company. Or a company. Yeah, that's the, the name of the, the company, the made flow meters. And he passed away in 1933 from arterial thrombosis. <coughs> His uh, legacy for, for the fluid flow area is that he standardized all the available data on fluid flow problems. And he wrote numerous papers on it. And he had an extensive library covering all all aspects of uh, fluid flow. He also was, uh, became the vice president and chief engineer of Republic Flow Meters. And uh, for what we know here, and what is important, is in 1930 he invented the spitz class slide for solving problems of fluid flow in circular pipes. Now this is the slide rule, as you see with the flaps closed at the, the first side, first slide. It uh, contains a number of uh, scales, one here for diameter of uh, pipes, one for the length of pipes, and also A and B and C D scales. And it also cons had concise notes for the use of the slide. Now, you see the two slides there? They both slide together. They're actually uh, synced into one another. Uh, that's fairly unusual for a dual slide slide rules where they usually have a part of the base separating either of the two slides. And if you want to know more about the, the use of the slide rule, then I suggest you look at the patent, which I've, that's a, uh, uh, a link to it. And also I've, in the paper itself, I've typed out all the uh, concise instructions that appear on both of the uh, uh, flaps of the slide on the prototype. Now, as you see, there is some writing <coughs> there. And this is what surprised me when I, I actually received the slide rule. It says the first working model of the rule submitted by John Williams, uh, to John Williamson, the consulting engineer, on the late December 1913 by Mr. Spitzglass. And that was really a model for the patent application. 
And the patent was actually applied for in July 1914 and was granted a, a year later in July 15. And this is the production rule. You can see it's the rule that I have. It's a production model number 297. And down here, it's got, it still has patent applied for on the stock, I thought. Being such a mature model number, it uh, would have had the patent number on there, but it doesn't. Now let's do some comparisons of this. As you put them both together, you can see one thing stands out straight away. The prototype here is much larger than the production model. I prefer the prototype. I can actually read it with my failing eyesight these days. So it actually stands out better. Um, it's got larger print and so forth. Whereas this, yeah, it's fairly hard to read even close up. Another part of the comparison, copyright date, which is fairly obvious. One had 1913 and one had 1914. And the A and B scales and CD scales, both of, both of the rules had them. One had, uh, one had railroad, railroad track format for the uh, stenciling, and the other one had the open format for the stenciling. That was the only difference. Now the patent, <coughs> as you can, as you can well aware, be well aware, the uh, production rule had patent applied for on it, whereas the prototype certainly didn't. That's obvious. And the pressure mark on both of them was slightly different and because there was a number of scales in there. And there was a log scale added to the, uh, uh, to the reduction model. The funny thing about it is the log scale was only added to one side of these slides on the uh, steam and water side, whereas the gas and air side did not have the log scale. So I'm not too sure what you need, needed to do when you put, turned over the slides. <coughs> There's also a gauge mark Oops. added on the production rule. And you could guess what that gauge mark was. It's pi over 4, so you can actually do the area of a circle or the volume of a cylinder, which is for working out fluid flow in pipes would be probably a good thing to have. And there are coloured slides. Now, I'm not too sure what colour that is. One side was black and one side was dark blue. It's very hard to tell the difference between them. But the, uh, the actual concise instructions included with them says, do not mismatch the slides. Always you know, make sure the colour is right. But it's very hard to actually tell them apart. But all you could do is really go by steam and water, steam and water, or gas and air and gas and air, and go from that way. Production additions. Um, as you can see on the prototype model, there was mainly cardboard, cardboard and paper flaps. Whereas in the uh, uh, production model, they actually made a leather case that contained the two, uh, two types of instructions in there. And in the patent application, you can actually see <coughs> the way they constructed it. There was a leather casing around there, press studs actually held it together. And also on the bottom there were press studs to the base. So you could actually take the whole cover off if you, if you required. Now production and sales, it was produced from 1915 through to the early 1960s. I'm not too sure how much was, how many were, uh, how many were produced. Um, I assume it was actually produced in Chicago, that's where Mr. Spitzgrass came from, but I have no idea who the actual manufacturer was. And in, since about 2000, 26 have been sold on eBay for an approximate price or a medium price of uh, 37 US dollars. 
Now, Mr. Spitzglass, as an aside, had a formula named after him, and that's the formula. It's uh, uh, a person called uh, David Simpson wrote a book called, let's have a look. trying to find the actual <coughs> book name. It certainly won't appear in my library. It's called Practical Onshore Gas Field Engineering. And in there, he observed that the formula was used for approximate, approximating the flow in vacuum conditions. And he added that it doesn't seem to do a great job. Right. Then he said, <laughs> he says, but engineers seem to have an insatiable need to have an equation for everything. Actually, I contend looking around this room, that engineers seem to have an insatiable need to have a slide book for everything. <laughs> so. so thank you, and I hope I've done Mr. Spitzglass proud. Thank you. Yes, it does. Uh, it had, it's got two grooves at the top, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was never, when I bought it, it didn't have it, so it's been missing for a long time. Was the material for both for the production and for the prototype the same? No, the, um, um, the prototype was cardboard and paper. Okay. The um, production model was plastic. Okay. Some other questions? Yes, please. This was uh, <coughs> manufactured until quite recently. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen many slide charts for the same purpose. Yes. Do two, I suppose. Yes. How do they compare? I haven't actually done any calculations using both of them, so it's not one of my favourite subjects. For <laughs> 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 I prefer fluid flow in electrical conductors. <laughs> well, that's something for a new presentation. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. No one? So let's thank again. Thank you.